This is Voice the Culture, a podcast for the modern day confused citizen. So what so what are we gonna do here, folks? I only need eleven thousand votes. Fellas, I need eleven thousand votes. Give me a break. Uh you know, we have that in spades already. This was President Trump on a call with Georgia's Secretary of State. Hi, I'm your podcast host, Helen. I'm Kelly. I'm Michelle. I'm Amy. And I'm Carolyn. And in this episode, we'll be talking about the recent political climate in the United States. Where do we even start? Okay, so let's just first start off with the Georgia wins. John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock um, winning the two Senate um, runoff races in Georgia. And so now with these two wins, the Democrats now have control of the legislative and executive branch because with the 50-50 split between like Democrats and Republicans, uh, like whenever the two sides do have a disagreement and it's a tie, then the vice president will, who is now Kamala Harris, will make the decision. Yes, okay. And then a shout out to, of course, always Stacey Abrams and also to all the other organization and grassroots campaigns who all fought to really push for um, a high voter turnout and for to encourage people to vote. And now Mitch McConnell is now, it's great to hear this, minority leader. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I feel like the Georgia election would not have happened if it weren't for leaders like Stacey Abrams and and came by vote and a bunch of other organizations who helped get youth and POC voters out there and represented. So yes, Georgia really saving the entire United States. <laughs> like that night when um, Warnock was already projected to win, I was like happy. I went to bed happy. I was like, yes, because Ossoff was already basically winning. So I was like, yes, can't wait to wake up in the morning and just like celebrate because I was, so I went to bed happy. All of a sudden I woke up to a storm. The storming of the Capitol. Yeah, so basically on January 6th, 2021, I believe, a bunch of right-wing supremacists, terrorists, if you will, stormed the Capitol building of the United States. It was essentially a staged coup d'etat, which means that people within um, a certain group who support maybe a politician or an authoritarian figure they're trying to organize and overthrow the entire government. They're trying to start a revolution, if you will. And a lot of these people were actually Nazi supporters. I don't know where the, I don't know where the conspiracy is that they were undercover Antifa or BLM supporters, which is completely like, how, how do you even prove that? These people were clearly right-wing supporters and they made sure of that. They were proud boys. They came in there, they stole a podium. They broke into Congress, men's offices, and they were just creating havoc. And the police naturally were not doing anything. If you actually look at many of the clips, a lot of the policemen were just standing around and even taking selfies with these terrorists. And it was just a horrible day for DC. Yeah, the police, like there are so many videos of like the cops literally opening the gates for them. And there were a few like even waving them in and it was pretty crazy. And like there was this one clip, I think it was someone from like the media took because they were saying that like, oh, like I'm press. And then the cop was just standing there and he was like, oh, like no one can go in. And then like, as we see like all these people just walking in, like who are like the Trump supporters and whatnot, like they're all of them just like walking in right in front of them. And like these two people are standing like in front of each other and like the person's like, oh, I'm press. And then he's like, the cop's like, no, no one can go in. And then there's just people rushing in. I'm like, oh God. Like January 6th, 2021, like that's a date that is a, I will remember forever. And like genuinely like a day in history that like should be talked about. It's kind of crazy because I see a lot of people saying that like time to move on. Like we can't really, you know, move on from this. And I saw this comparison on Twitter and I thought it was like good. Like people are saying like, for, like, for example, 9-11, never forget like that's the whole like saying or slogan whatever of 9-11 is never forget and then yet now the capital was attacked and vandalized and everything and now they're like oh just move on like we can't just move on like these people it's like people's like offices were like completely wrecked like um there's like papers everywhere and like yeah like all these people stealing stuff breaking historical things and like we can't just move on this is like a very serious thing and honestly like it could be even bigger than what 
we initially thought because of the bombs that were found and they found another truck full of bombs and like guns and there's like that one picture of the guy who had like zip tie handcuffs on him like they they could have like actually kidnapped congress people because they they did make it that close because they did make it onto one of the chambers like they actually made it in and yeah like them stealing a podium from the house so like they made it in so they could have gotten to the actual like congress people and that guy with the freaking zip tie handcuffs like they were trying to like uh, capture these people and with like the noose that was found I don't know if it was like found that day or if it was found like a few days after it happened but there was like a noose in front of the capitol building yeah so there's a lot of people saying that like they're very we came very close to like an actual like it could have been a public execution it could have been like anything but yeah like with all the bombs and stuff like it was pretty serious stuff and like we can't just like move on from this i just thought it was very interesting that the fact that like our own capital was raided i feel like that kind of shakes like the um, our democracy as a whole because like the whole point of a government is to be you know civilized and um peaceful and the fact that like a whole horde like a, a mob of people came in and then just disrupted everything is very unsettling to say the least and it's very interesting because like we taxpayers pay for like the police and the army but we aren't really protected it's or it feels like the police and like the military are only really there but they're not there in times of our need yeah and like what was also really disappointing was trump's response to all of this he he tweeted something saying um we love you. You're very special. Like he came out with the yeah. video. It was like Trump, basically, who instigated all of this. Like he tweeted it, like literally, like weeks before. This has, which is still so crazy to me that like they didn't set up enough, enough like security and stuff. But Trump has been tweeting out like, you know, January sixth, see you there, and like like before the riots like happened, like he went out and like had a speech, and he was telling people like literally to like you know go out there and and yeah like i feel like usually when anyone kind of like makes threats like that the fbi fbi like automatically catches them like even if you make a threat like online or you tweet out that like i'm gonna shoot up a school or like i'm gonna bring a bomb somewhere like they'll find it and they'll like investigate but with this amount of people like thousands of people playing this through social media and emails and stuff and like no one caught them it's still like it's I feel like it's very yeah, clear that like, like they wanted this to happen yeah like additionally he was like urging his supporters to come on Wednesday like for the rally the day like when the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate were like scheduled to um, certify his election loss and he was like telling them to like walk to the Capitol to fight it definitely felt like he was like instigating it oh and him saying like we love you you're very special I just I don't understand how you can say that there's there were like Nazi supporters like in the crowd. There are people wearing like Nazi clothing. Like there was a guy with a Camp Auschwitz um hoodie and stuff. So it's like pretty scary to see that like people still support that. And like yeah, so like Trump saying we love you, you're very special. It's like at the same time he's trying to tell them to stop and that there should be peace. He also said that, which basically just like showed that he he's in support of the riots and that like you know you're very special like he he believes that like these people did the right thing and like if saying we love you it's not gonna stop people it's, gonna, it's only gonna encourage them and like they're gonna hear that and they're like oh yeah like we're doing this great thing all for you mr trump and like you know it's only gonna get worse so it doesn't say that like just overall like the response that day was just terrible like no yeah i felt like they like it sort of felt like he was just like me babying like the white people you know it was like trying to like gently like let them down like I, I feel like it shouldn't really be something like where you should just um like be kind to it because like their the protest was extremely aggressive and like unnecessary too we need to be harsh and like criticize their mistakes because they need to face their consequences yeah it's, it's kind of like when he wouldn't condemn white supremacy it's like the same thing that's happening right now is that like these people should be yeah like held accountable these people should be charged and arrested and yet nothing's really happening and it's kind of crazy to see and yeah like storming the capital that is so extreme like that doesn't happen the only time that that happens is like war and like yeah like just storming the capital that is like the most insane thing like i still can't believe like 
January 6th. Like, I can't believe that day happened. Like, I woke up the next day and was, like, in complete disbelief. I was like, was that a fever dream? Because, like, it was, yeah. The fact that four people died minimum and one of them was a police officer and people were still trying to say, well, oh, well, at least it wasn't, like, Black Lives Matter. At least they weren't burning down buildings. That is just a false equivalency because what was this capital storm trying to accomplish? Biden was already acknowledged as president. Trump was already going to leave or he sh- should have like conceded at that point. And everybody in Congress and in the government had already acknowledged that this was not going to happen. Trump was not going to be president anymore. So what was the point of storming the Capitol? Like stealing and robbing? Like the fact that these people were like, oh, at least we're not like BLM, like burning down buildings. You don't see us burning down buildings. Our party lost. And then this stuff happens. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, maybe you're not like burning down buildings, but you're still disrupting the government. And, you know, like the people that are supposed to, are supposed to represent like different people from like, they're supposed to represent you as like Americans and they're just trying to do their job and you storm in and you disrupt the order, the natural order. You don't have any right to like put yourself above like people who are just fighting to have their voice be heard because the storming into the Capitol is more just like throwing an angry tantrum rather than trying to stand up for, for oppression that's that's been in America's system for years on end. There's a difference between standing up for against systemic racism and just being angry because things didn't turn out the way you wanted them to with the 2020 elections. God, yeah. And it's also like really frustrating to see people like switching up after what occurred in the Capitol riot. Like um, during the Capitol riot, there was a 35 year old white woman named Ashley Babbitt who was attempting to climb through a broken window and she got shot by the police during the protest. And now people are suddenly like switching up and saying ACAB. And like, I don't like disagree with ACAB, but why are people only mentioning it now when something happens to a white person? Like what happened to numerous unjustified shootings that occurred against people of color, especially against black people, or like the tear gas and rubber bullets against BLM protesters, like despite having like the majority of them being like peaceful, you know? Like people, like they're, they were staying silent like during like the BLM protests and stuff. But like when it's against like a white, women you know people suddenly have like people suddenly switch up and like are now saying a cab there's like pictures and stuff of the police getting attacked by blue lives matter flag and it's just so it just shows like like the blue lives matter it's not a movement it was just an attack on black lives matter because people didn't want to support black lives matter it it just goes on to show how like blue lives matter and like all lives matter was just used as a way to like counter attack against like black lives matter and like um and then like speak over black people you know the black lives matter protests like 93 percent of them were peaceful and like people are trying to compare the two like black lives matter protests versus these riots like it's not a comparable situation because two like completely different agendas and you can't compare the two yeah, I just want to add really quick that, like, even if you're someone who thinks that, oh, well, I don't support violence of all kinds, and you're very much so a pacifist, you have to understand that the Black Lives Matter protests are not uncommon. We've seen protests against attacks on democracy and systemic racism in Hong Kong. We've seen it in the past with Eric Garner. We've seen it all across the world. Now, as for storming the Capitol, that is quite unprecedented. That has never happened before. No other foreign nation has ever stormed the U.S. Capitol before. This is the first instance of domestic terrorism, and to pretend otherwise and say that, oh, well, it's just another protest like BLM, it's completely tone deaf. It doesn't shows that the misconduct of our government that day and the police is a national embarrassment to our country. So there was also a photo trending online of Representative Andy Kim cleaning up after the Capitol riot. And a lot of people from the Asian community were saying stuff like, oh, this is what an ideal immigrant should be, which sort of bothers me. And like, I find it sort of like irritating because it feels like they're sort of playing into the model minority myth, which like, you know, they forgot that it upholds white supremacy. And like, it's 
um, sole goal is to split up people of color. And like, also, why is it necessary for us who, to have to like clean up after white people, you know? Like they need to clean up after their own mess that they made themselves. Yeah, and I saw like a comparison on Twitter that was like, Andy Kim cleaning up versus like Josh Hawley is out there like being proud of what happened. Like, I don't know, there's such a difference between like the white response versus like everyone else. So the Democrats have um, suggested that um, Trump be impeached the second time or put under the 25th Amendment, which asks is for the removal of the president and so that the vice president can become um, president. Is this possible for Pence to become president within a couple of days? I mean, they sworn in Amy Coney Barrett literally like a week before you know, so I feel like it's possible, but I don't know, because the thing is, like, Pence has to agree to it, and, like, him and Trump are too buddy-buddy for him to do that. Like, I obviously want Trump to be impeached because there's so many, like, benefits of it, but, like, I don't know, like, because he's clearly not, literally, like, he's not stable enough, like, that's, I feel like, the main argument, he's not stable enough to, like, hold that position anymore. Like, the fact that, also, like, he has the nuclear bomb codes, and he can't even keep his Twitter account He's also, like, banned from, like, every freaking social media app. Yeah, he's, like, not stable enough to become president. Like, the fact that he instigated all this violence and uh, he erupted this whole thing just because he lost, like, he can't be president anymore. But also, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, like, called Pence so that they could talk about, like, discuss the 25th Amendment and him stepping up to become president. But, like, Pence left them on, what, like, hold or whatever. Like, he didn't pick up for, like, 20 minutes. So, like, he clearly doesn't want to even talk about it. So, I don't know if, like, there's going to be a possibility. So, like, hopefully, like, they're just, like, trying, now they're just trying to push um, Trump to, like, like impeachment, a trial. And I think the latest, they said it was, like, what, Wednesday, I think? Like, that's the latest that they want to happen. And Trump has already, like, wrote up with his best friend, Rudy Giuliani. It's possible, but ooh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Like, of course, I want it to happen, but I don't know if it's actually going to happen because I feel like even now there's still too many people on Trump's side, and especially because Pence needs to step up and he's not going to. Yeah, and also the fact that Biden is still going to be sworn in as president on January 20th, 2021, there is a possible talk of more riots happening. And this time frame from now, which is the day we're recording is January 10th to the 20th, so in 10 days, it's either Trump gets impeached he gets forcefully removed by the 25th Amendment or nothing happens and Biden is still sworn in. It's just a matter of what scale will the violence be. Yeah, and people are already playing, like, seeing on, like, Twitter and that app that they're all using now because Twitter has banned them all, um, Parler. I, can't, I still can't believe he got banned from Pinterest, though. Like, oh my God. He can't make aesthetic boards now. <laughs> he can't make a vision board? How is I know, there are, like, no vision boards for Trump. It's so funny. How is he gonna I mean, like, I get his spa for his room? <laughs> his Tumblr room. Yes. Um, yeah, so on Parlor, they're already like ready, they're already planning. They're like saying on the nineteenth and on the twentieth, like we're doing this again. And people were already saying that like honestly, like January sixth was kind of a rehearsal, which is insane because yeah, like it was kind of a rehearsal, like with the whole um the governor that they tried to kidnap in Michigan, like people are saying that was kind of practice for like one of like maybe the congress people or someone like in like high power for that to happen on the 20th which is really scary to think about like i feel like they have to you know up their security because obviously this can't happen again even though like on january 6th like they knew something was gonna happen yet they still didn't prepare for it but yeah i think now like there's no way that's gonna happen again but they're definitely planning it especially on parlor like google and apple i'm pretty sure like already blocked but yeah, they're already planning. Um, I just also want to touch on people's speculation about the First Amendment rights being revoked because now that Trump is banned on Twitter and a bunch of other apps, 
that, does that mean you can't speak anymore? Well, the thing is, a lot of these companies like Twitter and Facebook, they're private companies. So while the First Amendment does guarantee freedom of speech, uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to private companies because the government does not have the jurisdiction to force them to allow everyone to say what they want. Yeah, they're always like, oh my god, like, well, we can't talk anymore. Wow, this is unconstitutional, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, they're private companies, companies, they can do what they want. Like, they have, um, like, policies and stuff, like, saying that you can't just, like, go on and, like, instigate violence. And, like, him getting banned on every single app <laughs> there is, is so funny. But it's more of, like, a stand, like, the company is making and, like, saying that, like, this is where, you know, we stand on the issue. We do not support white supremacy. We don't support, you know, all this violence that's happening. So Biden tweeted, I think on January 6th, he said, America is so much better than what we're seeing today. And I mean, it wasn't just Biden too. I think there was a lot of other people saying that like, we're so much better than this. Like, this is not America. This is not who we are. But I feel like it clearly is who we are because it happened. Like, if all this like violence and all this anger, if that's not who we are, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. If that's not who we are, then what happened on January 6th would have been a one-time thing. It would have been a fluke. It would have been, you know, it would have been something that like we never saw coming, but it was something that we saw coming. And this violence and anger has been going on for the past four years and even longer than that. Honestly, for however long America has been a thing, been a thing, how long, 200 whatever years, I don't care, I'm not doing math. This like division, it's been going on for like hundreds of years. And so, no, we aren't better. And, like, I know, obviously, what he's trying to say and what everyone else is trying to say, that, like, we should be better, but clearly we're not better because this whole, like, white supremacy and terrorism and whatnot, it's been going on and it's not going away. Yeah, so, like, the question is, just like, are we better? Like, we're clearly not better because it's going to happen again, too. Hopefully not, but it is going to happen again. I know this is probably not not how he wanted it to come off, but I feel like saying that um this is not who we are like the rioters don't uh represent america it's i don't know it kind of gives off like this image that americans are always right you're avoiding the problem like you're not really facing it head on like in order to fix this we need to face it head on and like say look this is a problem that we're dealing with we need to do something about it we need to like discuss it we're clearly divided and like something needs to be done about it yeah, like, I obviously see what, like, he was trying to do, just to kind of, like, bring some more peace and, like, optimism to the day, but, yeah, like, it, I feel like what happened was clearly is what America is, and, yeah, like, facing the problem, and, like, all those people who, like, Trump, first of all, and everyone else who, you know, also in scared the violence, like, Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, like, all those people should also be charged and held accountable, like, I'm tired of seeing, like, politicians and, like, whatnot, like, people with money and power just getting away with anything that they do just because they have money and power. I kind of want to talk about, like, Pence. I feel like Trump supporters are so, like, they, like, switch up super easily. Like, they literally, it's like a cult. They, like, follow Trump so much that, like, when Pence, like, said that he would not stand in the way of the Constitution, which, like, when he did that, I feel, again, he was just, like, saving himself. Because, like, he clearly knew that he couldn't do anything. But once he said that, all of a sudden, like, all these Trump supporters switched up on Pence. And that day, there's, like, videos of them chanting, hang Mike Pence. So they like completely did a you know they switched on him and they're like okay now we hate Mike Pence because he's not gonna stand in the way of the constitution like what the heck they're all yelling like hang Mike Pence and like all this crazy stuff about Pence and like how they don't like him anymore oh okay yeah and like speaking of like you know Pence saving himself like all those people who resigned like King Betsy DeVos, I think. Betsy DeVos um, Elaine Chow yeah. a lot of Republican cabinet leaders yeah. you know there's a lot there's like a whole long list and like I think people part of like the security stuff and 
to there's like a lot of people who resigned but again i think all those people who resigned they didn't resign because they were against the riots like like really like that's your breaking point oh my god they stormed the couch there's like so many other things that you know you could have resigned over but all those people who resigned they just kind of did it to save themselves because obviously like anyone who was a part of the instigation of the violence and like all of that they're gonna prosecute or at least try to prosecute so anyone who's like super close with Trump or whatever they're gonna have to go to trial and whatever but yeah they're just saving themselves because if they resign then they're kind of like people can still go after them but it's kind of like they're no longer in the position that they have that they used to hold then they no longer have to like really be associated with Trump and so they're kind of like running away I guess okay weren't they all didn't they also want to like resign I know specifically with Betsy DeVos, I'm pretty sure she only resigned because she didn't want to be there to like confirm that Donald Trump lost the 2020 election and then like Biden was the one who was like for sure going to be sworn in as president on January 20. And yeah, it's just interesting because there were like a lot of politicians on the right, right wing like Ted Cruz, who like it's pretty much guaranteed that they would be shut down. Um, but they still wanted to oppose like the fact that Joe Biden was going to be like sworn in and like they wanted to like oppose the confirmation and I feel like the only thing that they would get out of that is to like like strengthen their Trump supporter fan base or to like kind of to get like the Trump supporters and like people who are already like frustrated with like our system to be even more frustrated and to like like to say something about it because since they're in support of like Trump now now they're saying like the system is rigged and now there's like something wrong but then like 2016 like obviously it felt like the elections were rigged but like um people who were in support of Trump were just like no it's just like the Democrats being butthurt like everyone on the left are being butthurt because um Trump won and he just has more supporters so infuriating <laughs> yeah oh and also like Trump when he came out with that video saying that he was gonna I guess concede it wasn't him really conceding though he was saying that like how okay they're finally gonna move into the transition to a new they're gonna find a transition and I'm like okay first of all you should have done this months ago it's kind of too late we're literally like so close to the inauguration and like him saying that he's not gonna show up to the inauguration too like <sighs> he's so annoying okay but um yeah that too again was kind of him saving himself because like clearly now he's like actually scared because with the election like these past four years like everyone has been or like democrats more have been trying to prove that you know like he had like russia like help him with the election like how he won the election and like hackers and stuff like that and like that's all like they couldn't really prove that i think a lot of it was proof but they couldn't like you know nothing was like super solid and i think with that like because he knew that they wouldn't find anything, so he wasn't scared, so he never, like, backed down. But now there is, like, clear, clear evidence that he's the one who, you know, instigated the violence, and he's the one who, like, told all these people to go out. And so, like, now he's, like, scared. So now he's, like, okay, yeah, we're gonna, you know, bring in the new president and, like, all this stuff, just, like, he's just trying to, like, make himself look good, I guess. Again, it's not working, sweetie. You guys want to wrap up? Any last thoughts? Does anyone else have anything to say? Um... Not much. Uh, just that if you're feeling like scared right now or anxious or even just like tired of what's going on in the world, we totally get it. It's not an easy time for anyone. 2021 was bound to not be that different from 2020, you know? But understand that there's many stages of grief and the first one is denial. It's okay to deny, like, I can't believe this happened. Like what Joe Biden did was like, America is so much better. Like, Yes, but we also need to address the bigger issues that this is going to happen again, unfortunately, and we need to be prepared now that we know better. All right, that wraps up our discussion on January 6, 2021, and on the past, present, and future of American democracy. If you're interested in what we do and want to better understand what we're about, please check out all our socials. All ads are a waste of culture. If you like this episode, please give us a review or a like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified every time we upload a video. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we'll be back soon with another episode. Please stay safe and healthy, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.